Next we go on to intestinal protozoa part 2, which uh, comprises mainly coccidian parasites and microsporidia. Now again here this will, this will help you to understand the parasite biology, their pathogenesis and clinical presentation, diagnostic features, treatment and also how to prevent and control the diseases. Now all these are mainly intestinal opportunistic pathogens that is they rarely cause disease in uh, immuno, uh, immunocompetent persons, but in, in immunocompromised people they can cause severe disease. The organisms in this group which are important are Cryptosporidium, Isospora, Cyclospora, Microsporidium. Now, Cryptosporidium, there are two major genotypes which have been identified, genotype 1 C. hominis and genotype 2 C. pavum. Now, genotype 1 is the hominis is the uh, causes only has only own human sources, it is non-infective for mice or calves. So, there is only anthroponetic transmission that is from man to man, while genotype C uh, 2 or C. parvum has human and bovine sources, it is infective for mice and calves and there, so there will be zoonotic transmission in this case from the animals to the human beings. There are other genotypes also example C. felis, dog type etcetera which are rare, but they can be isolated occasionally from AIDS patients. So, the mainly two genotypes are the ones which are there which can cause infection in human beings hominis or parvum. Now, cryptosporidium sporidium parvum was first observed in gast gastric mucosal crypts of mice and hence it was named cryptosporidium um, uh, genus. Importance, it is frequent cause of self limited diarrhea in AIDS patients, rarely it can cause life threatening diarrhea in immunocompetent patients, acute self limiting diarrhea in healthy persons is a common feature due to cryptosporidium. Now, it stays in the intestinal tract found attached to surface epithelial cells of the small intestine. All stages are confined to microvilli. They can less frequently be found in stomach, appendix, colon or rectum etcetera. Now, mode of infection is by ingestion of food or drinks contaminated with feces containing sporulated thick walled oocysts, sporulated thick walled oocysts which are there. Infective dose of this oocysts is 10 to 100 cysts. They are too small to be filtered by normal filtration techniques and the oocyst of cryptosporidium is fully mature on release and is infective immediately. Definitive hosts are humans and other animals, mammals reported from 150 different mammal species. There is no intermediate host and there is a cosmopolitan distribution that it is seen all over. Reservoir, main reservoir is domestic animals, Cryptosporium pavum can reside in 150 different species of mammals such as cattle, sheep, goats, she deer, mice etcetera. Non biting cyclophora and flies are another reservoir which can be important and should be kept in mind. There is no vector for Cryptosporidiasis as such and basically we see a lot of outbreaks of waterborne infection. Why do these occur? There are four major reasons, one is there is high prevalence of Cryptosporidium in water sources. Second is that most oases are refractory to chlorine or to chlorine treatment of drinking water. Most filtration methods which are normally performed for, for water safe drinking water are also not efficient to uh, remove the oases due to their small diameter and also the infectious disease for human beings is extremely low. So, it is very difficult to avoid infection by these and this is what is responsible for so many waterborne infections that take place. Life cycle mainly it is a sporozoite which in, uh, enters into the intestinal cells, goes on to form trophozoites, they go on to call schizogeny, one type 1 and 2, gametes are formed, zygote is formed and further finally oocyst is released with 4 sporozoites or oocyst in C2. Now, this is what happens contaminated food or water containing the oocyst is taken in, thick walled oocyst is taken in and that is what goes to the intestine and causes the cycle. Now, what if you try to understand in detail? The uh, oocyst is entering, it is multiplying in the intestine and coming out as thick walled oocyst, which is the infective form. So, basically, when it goes to the intestinal cell, it goes, multiplies, goes to the schizogony, there is merogony, asexual cycle takes place, type 1 and type 2 merons are formed, then further gametes are formed, zygote forms, there is sexual reproduction, and there are two oocysts released. Thin walled oocyst is the one which causes auto infection, can cause auto infection in the human being, while thick walled oocyst is the one which is excreted outside and is the infective form. Now, as far as the pathogenesis is concerned, there are three main uh, reasons for uh, it causing diarrhea. One is osmotic, that is, there is characterized by intracyte inflammation, malfunction, there is decreased sodium absorption and increased chlo chloride secretion. 
Second is inflammatory that is associated with invasion of the mucosa and there is inflammation of the lamina propria is there and so you see pus cells or leukocytes in stools. Third is secretory that is it is associated with production of enterotoxins which characterized by watery diarrhea. So, there is increased intracellular permeability and also there is inflammation in the submucosal, submucosal layer which is what is responsible for causing this disease. Now, cryptosporiasis can occur in a variety of mammals or animals I told you, it can, the symptomatology most common is watery diarrhea. Other symptomatology could be abdominal cramps, nausea, low grade fever, dehydration, weight loss or no symptoms at all, it could be any of these. Now, in, as if the infection occurs in immunocompromised host, then it produces a very severe cholera like diffuse watery diarrhea, there could be up to 70 motions per day with the loss of up to 15 to 20 milliliters of water. Duration can vary from months to years with a up to 50 percent weight loss. There is a protracted course because of auto infection that keeps taking place and whole of GI tract by bile ducts, pancreas, even pharynx can be infected and usually it is fatal in immunocompromised host. And same in AIDS patients, if the count is less than 50, they are at the greatest risk for the severity of the disease and also prolonged carriage is there. In AIDS, they may invade the bronchial and biliary tracts also and can be demonstrated in sputum. In that case, it will cause respiratory cryptosporidiosis and will present with coughing, wheeze, hoarseness or it could present with uh, difficulty in breathing. While in an immunocompetent people, incubation period can be long, 1 to 13 days. Usually, children are the ones who are infected. There can be a mild infection, self limiting with complete recovery and symptoms generally last for 7 to 14 days, but can persist for up to four, uh, 1 month or so, but they are very minor symptoms. So, 3 possible forms of illness can talk, take place, asymptomatic illness, acute diarrhea or there can be a persistent diarrhea. Now, diarrhea is usually watery with mucus, there is no blood or leukocytes which are seen. Other symptoms which could accompany could be abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, malabsorption, dehydration, there could be a low grade fever, there is anorexia and weight loss because generally people uh, avoid taking feeds during this time. For lab diagnosis, main samples which would be important would be feces sample or one can take sputum in case there is respiratory disease, bronchial washings, duodenal or jejunal aspirations if you can get or intestinal biopsy if it is possible. Now, for feces specially, one should do concentration before trying to detect the organism, zinc sulphate centrifugal flotation technique or Sheather's sugar flotation technique or you could do formal ether concentration. So, basically the lab diagnosis is between microscopy, serology and histopathology, these are the 3 main uh, backbones for the diagnosis. For microscopy basically means the demonstration of oocysts and feces, this you can do by direct wet mount or you could do acid fast stain where you see pink. Um, oocysts or you could do trichome stain or you could do direct fluorescent stain by which these oocysts could be detected with great sensitivity. Morphologically these oocysts they contain the uh, acid fast stain can detect more than 50, uh, 500,000 5 lakhs oocysts per ml, they demonstrate oocysts in acute stage of the illness. Also in these oocysts are 5 to 6 micron in size, they are ovoid, spherical and they contain up till 4 slender bow shaped sporozoids in them. Histopathology can be done that is if you have a biopsy specimen from intestines, so you can do toledin blue stain or other stains and you can reveal cysts in the uh, mucosa, even gallbladder sample or any sample where it suppose the mucosa is, uh, is uh, suspected to be infected, you can take the biopsy and do my, uh, the staining and look for like here you can see trophozoids which are there in the lining cells or one can do use purified oocyst as an antigen and look for antibodies. Antibodies usually appear 6 to 8 weeks after infection and you can look for antibodies by in indirect immunofluorescence assay or by ELISA test. Treatment, used many of them do not require treatment because asymptomatic illness or if it is required you need to give sparamycin, nitroxanide, uh, paramomycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin could be useful. Supportive treatment is needed because lot of water loss is there in immunocompromise especially to prevent dehydration. As far as prevention is concerned, outbreaks since they have occurred in many areas especially in rainy seasons, multiple disinfectant and water treatment process is what is needed, but mostly they, these do not filter out the oocysts. Chloris, chlorine is also known to not to kill the oocysts, so filtered or boiled water is what is needed 
boiling and freezing below minus 10 degree Fahrenheit can kill the oozes. So, this was as far as the cryptosporidae was concerned. Now, we will go on to cyclospora. Cyclospora, this is also common in developing countries. Human species is Cyclospora catenensis. This is another organism that came into uh, came to be known after AIDS research, that is after a uh, lot of AIDS patients were found to be suffering from diarrhea. Life cycle is not fully known, but it is similar to cryptosporidium and the reservoir in this case are small rodents and birds. It produces prolonged diarrhea in adults. Now, cryptosporia chitinsis since it was first discovered in 1979. Mode of infection is by ingestion of food or water contaminated with sporulating oocysts containing two oocysts 4 millimicron in size which could be containing 4 sporozoids within them or contaminated fresh fruits or raspberries have been implicated. Incubation period can be 2 to 7 days and leads on to small ball enteritis. Transmission is usually fecal oral, direct transmission person person can take place, non infectious when excreted, but takes up till 5 to 7 days to become fully mature and become infectious. So, oocysts need to sporulate before they become infectious. So, that is why they need 7 to 15 days before becoming infectious. So, it is usually food or water borne and reservoirs could be chickens, ducks, uh, shellfish, dogs, all these could act as reservoirs. So, life cycle basically comprises that there is sporulation outside the host, in fact it takes some time to form the infective stage, goes on releases sporozoids from oocyst which invade the introcytes, again develop into unsporulated oocysts, they are excreted into the feces. So, the ingested oocysts which are there they exist in the, the ingested uses which you get through contaminated food, water or raspberries, these are sporulated, they after sporulation they become infective, they go on they are ingested in the by con along with contaminated water, they exist in the GI tract, sporozoids in the and they produce sporozoids which invade the GI tract. They form asexual forms, merozoids type 1 merons, type 2 merons and they form sexual forms and finally, again spoocyst is formed which is laid on to the environment. The they go to the, the intestinal cells and form these asexual cells cell, uh, reproduction takes place as well as sexual reproduction takes place and finally, oocysts are released into the environment. So, incubation period can be from 2 to 11 days, endemic areas asymptomatic infections are seen more common, while non endemic areas they would be invariably symptomatic. The symptoms are usually anorexia, nausea, flatulence, can present with fatigue, abdominal cramping, diarrhea, low grade fever or weight loss. Younger children have some more severe uh, clinical symptomatology and even the elderly could have a more severe illness. So, clinical manifestations in AIDS could be more severe, median incubation period is about 7 days, symptoms are more severe, there is more weight loss, average duration is longer, increased morbidity due to the chronic diarrhea that occurs and even biliary disease could be reported in AIDS patients. Diagnosis usually is by stool sample which needs to be concentrated and you look for oocysts which are usually larger than cryptosporidium cysts and they show a soap bubble appearance. You can make a wet preparation in which you will see non refractile wrinkled oocysts or you can do fluorescence test by which you can the picking up of the cysts is much faster, sensitivity is more. You can also do acid fast stain, modified acid fast stain again in which wrinkles oocysts will be seen or you could suppose you get a biopsy sample, you can do histopath staining. See here in a wet mount you will see this oocyst with the wrinkled, while in modified again the wrinkled appearance is there and they are stained acid fast. You can see under ultraviolet microscopy, trichrome staining can be done or you could also do uh, see with safranin with formalin, this red colored structures. So, when you compare cryptosporidium pavum with cyclospora, they are smaller compared to cyclospora which are bigger. Treatment is by giving cotramaxazole, metronidazole, norfloxacin could be given, quinacrine can be given, nalidixic acid takes place, can also take care, diloxanide for it. So, and in addition to support, uh, supportive treatment which is needed because of the diarrhea, suppose there is dehydration. Prevention is by personal hygiene and safe water supply which is uh, necessary because these cyclospora are highly resistant to disinfectants commonly used in food and water processing. So, the main treatment stays cotramaxazole and metronidazole. 
Another organism which causes uh, diarrhea and which is seen in these immunocompromised patients is Isospora belli. It is again a coccidian parasite which causes diarrhea. It also resides in small intestinal epithelial cells. Human ref infections were first reported in 1915, more common in tropical and subtropical areas, also common in patients with AIDS. Mode of infection is again food and water contaminated with the mature oocysts which contain two sporoblasts. Now, these are the oocysts which contain two sporoblasts. The oocysts are elongated and ellipsoidal. They have contain two sporocysts. Each sporocyst contains four sporozoids. Oocysts are first unsporulated, mature after 48 hours at room temperature and then become infectious. Life cycle completes in one host An infective form is oocyst containing two sporoblasts. They can remain present in stools up till 120 days after infection. Uh, they are resistant to commonly used disinfectants and may remain viable for months in a cool or moist environment. These are the oocysts which you see which have got two sporoblasts. Fecal oral transmission is what is important that is ingestion of oocysts by contaminated food, water or environmental surfaces, but there is no animal reservoir which has been demonstrated. Life cycle is again the same oocyst once they are mature they can be taken in they release sporozoids which go and invade intracytes go through asexual multiplication form merozoids through sexual reproduction and again they form oocysts which is unsporulating which comes out sporulates and again is infective becomes infective. So, this is how it occurs the mature oocysts with the sporozoids they are in he, uh, they are ingested they go to the intestines they develop form more oocysts immature oocysts are the ones which are released and they go and become mature and then they can become infective. In the intestinal cycle they again go through the asexual uh, life cycle form merozoids or they form the sexual life cycle gametes and they form the oocysts and feces which is released. The same thing in more detail that uh, you can understand that their cells with contaminated uh, sporosis uses they enter and they go through this cycle while in the intestines they are uh, forming asexual reproduction then they are having sexual reproduction by forming gametes macro and micro gametes fertilization takes place and finally oocysts are released and these is oocysts are in non infective to start with and later become infective pathogenesis basically depends uh, is caused due to the invasion of these uh, organisms they invade into distal duodenum proximal geogenum and they cause cell damage or they produce a toxin which could be responsible for the pathogenesis as far as infection in immunocompetent host is concerned, mild GIT symptoms are there and it is usually self limiting. Fever begins 8 days after ingestion of oocysts can last for up to 8 days, non bloody diarrhea usually seen in uh, within a week or so after ingestion of oocysts and uh, <coughs> disease, but can be more severe in infants and young children. Symptoms include diarrhea, steatoria, headache, fever, malaise, they can be abdominal pain patient can have vomiting, dehydration and weight loss and all this is usually self limiting. Blood is not usually present in the feces, eosinophilia sometimes is observed in these patients which can be diagnostic and the disease is often chronic with parasites remaining in biopsy samples on feces for months altogether. So, the recurrences are common because contamination keeps taking place. Infection in AIDS and other ICH patients suppose you see they cause chronic life threatening diarrhea with dehydration. Diarrhea is so severe that very often it is fluid and secretory like diarrhea which is seen leads to severe dehydration may it require a hospitalization, fever and weight loss is there. Along with these um, uh, organisms sometimes in AIDS patient you will see other opportunistic pathogens also being present and there are extra intestinal manifestations also which are commonly seen. For diagnosis one needs stool sample, multiple samples should be taken need to be concentrated by formalin ether. You could also need to might have to do intro test by which you try and get the organism from the general or duodenal area upper or you could you need endoscopic sample or you could take a biopsy which when stained can show a oocyst in the jejunal mycosa. Demonstration of oocyst either by wet mount, epifluorescence or modified acid fast staining or by HNE staining. Now, in a immature oocyst this can be seen in a wet mount showing two sporoblasts same can be seen under uh, UV microscopy or you can stain with acid fast and see this uh, single acid fast with a single sporoblast here. One can also do saffron staining and look for these oocysts. Treatment is by giving cotramoxazole 2 tablets QID for 10 days and then 2 tablets BD for 3 weeks 
alternatively you might have you can give pyrimethamine or primaquine. So, if you try and compare the morphology of the three organisms that uh, we have just studied cryptosporidium, isospora and cyclospora. Cryptosporidium is the smallest the small 4 to 6 micron pink they are stained by acid fast staining. There are four crescentic sporozoites inside the sporosis oocyst. Isospora is the biggest 20 to 30 micron pink four sporozoites are there two sporocysts are there inside oocyst and within them there are four sporozoites. Cyclospora on the other hand is in between size 8 to 10 micron variable of pink or red stain again it has four sporozoites in two sporosis within the oocyst. So, this is the comparative diagnostic microscopy of this to be able to recognize them. If you see the morphology in small bowel biopsy again cryptosporidia are easily seen as 4 micron round ball dots in the uh, apical membrane of the enterocyte. Oocysts are seen as 20 micron big oval blue enterocyte inclusions, while the cyclospora is usually not seen with microscopy only reported in electron microscopy. Methods of prevention usually are good hygiene, safe traveling or hiking, vaccines are there, halogenation or filtration for all these um, intestinal coccidia all these methods are important. Hygienic practices usually involves washing hands thoroughly with soap and water after using the bathroom after handling animals, after touching any dirty surface or after eating or preparing food. Avoid consuming contaminated water, do not swallow recreational water or drink untreated water outside. One should peel and rinse fruits and vegetables, follow water advisories to prevent uh, infection. Safe traveling and hiking what is, what is needed that is you should take drinking water which is safe and not consume raw foods, must drink water which is filtered. Vaccines are uh, available, usually not available for our humans, but for animals they are available and they should be used. Halogenation, usually the cysts are resistant. Filtration is the most effective way of removing cryptosporidium cysts, while many filtration systems also are uh, there which can be used, which can implement other methods of um, in disinfection which are uh, halogenation, ozone or UV radiation which could be used. Another organism which uh, we will like to tell you which causes diarrhea is belongs to phylum microsporidia. They are obligate intracellular parasites, usually they are spore forming 143 genera and 1200 species are known and they are human pathogens. They could be encephalitozoan species, nosemia species, enterocytozoan species, microsporidium, plastophora, brachiola, vitaforma all these different the, um, difficult sounding words are the ones which are responsible for causing these disease. Microsporidia they are minute intracellular parasites compared to the earlier ones. Some 9 genera and 13 species are known associated with human disease, mostly they are seen in HIV infected and immunocompromised patients again, usually seen in patients who have CD4 less than 100 per millimicron and they could cause diarrhea and diseases they could also cause extra intestinal infections. They are reproduced by spores which are 2 to 4 millimicron in size and these spores can survive outside the host cell and is the infective form. Unique spores are there because they have a complex tubular extrusion mechanism by which infective material sporoplasm is injected into the cell. Mirogony and sporogony also take place and the spores are shed in feces. Sources of human infection usually are persons or animals infected with microsporidia, arthropods are also common hosts. Mode of transmission can be ingestion of spores, which could be seen in enterocytosome species by feces and urine the contamination is there or aerosol route can be seen in some certain other enterocytosome species and this in case the infection will be through sputum and respiratory samples or direct inoculation can be there which is seen in character conjunctival infection and this is con by contaminated fingers or by aerosol route. So, spores they are released in feces sporoplasm from them comes out goes to the attaches to, uh, enters the host cell uh, cytoplasmic vacuole, mirogony takes place, schizogony takes place, thick walled mature spores are produced and the host cell stretch and rupture and produce these spores which are released. So, here the they can be either through ingestion route or through the respiratory route or through the these organisms they enter and then they undergo the cycle of asexual as well as sexual cycle and the more of spores are produced. Pathogenicity usually they are invasive, they infect enterocytes, 
lamina propria cells and macrophages. So, intestinal ones are 90 percent of E binisi infections which are seen in immunocompromised patients or E intestinalis which produces chronic diarrhea malabsorption or mal with a mortality of 56 percent. Musculoskeletal uh, symptomatology could be by T hominis or Pleistophora species and which usually uh, present patients present with fever and myalgia. Ocular symptomatology a presentation could be with V cornea, nosemia conori or nosemia ocularum and they usually produce a foreign body sensation and decrease vision if they cause infection. Disseminated infection could also occur by any of these leading on to CNS, ocular, genitourinary, respiratory, gallbladder involvement. So, main is either intestinal involvement or musculoskeletal involvement, ocular involvement or a disseminated uh, organ system being involved. Diagnosis is by demonstration of spore in stool, urine, tissue, CSF, sputum, whichever organ system is involved accordingly the sample is important and you can do a modified trauma trichrome stain, you can do a GEMSA stain, fluorochrome stain which is calcofluoride can be used which increases the sensitivity, direct fluorescent antibody can be used and also transmission electron microscopy. See where bowel sample taken when stained can appear like these the spores are small which can be seen by trichrome staining, toluidine blue staining, calcofluor white staining sorry trichrome blue staining calcofloor white they appear to you know shine out and the sensitivity increases you can pick up even when there are very small few organisms or you could do antibody based immunofluorescence and then again the sensitivity is increased. Histopathology also you can demonstrate that is if you get a biopsy sample a corneal section you can demonstrate by uh, using GEMSA test or you could do a trichrome staining you can demonstrate these pores. Kidney biopsy sample or any sample you can if you get which has been infected you can demonstrate these pores these are small organisms which can be stained or you could do electron microscopy and you could look these for these spores developing forms inside the separated peristophorous vacuole. So, the demonstration basically the diagnosis is either in tissues or the stool sample in tissues you can do H and E staining pass GMS ZN staining or GEMSA staining like I showed you earlier. So, they produce typical gram positive brown Ben, brown hops which are there combination of gram and chromotrope can also be used. Other methods in addition to microscopy are serology that is you can do into immunofluorescent test, cognitive fixation test can be used to detect antibodies. PCR is another test which is being developed to look for these organisms or you could also grow them in tissue cultures Vero cell line RK13 or MRC15 5 but usually microscopy is the method which is most often employed. Treatment is by giving albendazole 400 milligram BD for 2 to 4 weeks or you can give itraconazole which helps in the treatment. Mm -hmm. Another organism which causes diarrhea and which is there seen in intestines is sarcocystis. It belongs to family sarcocystidae and the genus sarcocystis. There are species hominis and co hominis which are important. Alteration of generation is seen that is there is a definitive host, there is an intermediate host, both are in coming into play. Interst definitive host is the intestinal mucosa of the carnivores, while intermediate host is herbivore animals which can as a act as intermediate host. Infective form is sporocyst with four sporozoids. In humans, the intestinal uh, uh, infection is caused by S hominis, which could be coming from beef, or S U hominis, which can be coming from pork. Muscular uh, symptomatology is produced by a number of unidentified species collectively known as S. lindemanni. Morphologically there is a oocyst, sporocyst and a sarcocyst. Oocyst is the one which is a thin 10 to 15 19 mi uh, millimicron uh, size which is a has a transparent shell contains a pair of sporocyst which is released on rupture. Sporocysts are oval 8 to 10 millimicron contain four banana shaped sporozoids while sarcosis is bigger 100 to 200 millimicron septate spindle shaped along the length of the muscle fibers it can be seen and contains many banana shaped merozoids we will see in the life cycle. Now, sarcosporidiosis or sarcocystosis basically it can either infect human beings or it can infect animals. Infection spreads through throughout the various organs so it can be disseminated or can go to different tissues. Mode of transmission usually is ingestion of uncooked or undercooked meat containing sarcosis. So, it comes from the animals which have herbivore animals and the infection goes on to humans and others. 
So, what happens is the meat which is not from these animals which is not properly cooked and that produces these having, having these sarcosis, they produce the uh, metazoids, penetrate into the muscle cells and develop into cysts with bradycardia with these bradyzoids which are there, these animals are there, they produce this porosis and this cyst with bradyzoids is, uh, is when it is ingested in undercooked meat that goes to the intestine and there these porosis and thin walled oocysts are they, their sporozoids are released, they cause infection and finally, these porosis and thin walled oocysts are passed in the feces, they come out, they are ingested by cows and pigs and again they enter through the uh, sporosis rupture in their uh, intestines, they produce sporozoids which enter the endothelial cells of the blood vessels and undergo schizogony. So, what is happening is that the bradyzoids are released from the ruptured cyst, they enter the intestinal cells they cause um, multiplication, they are either having microgametes or they form macrogametes, cause fertilization, immature cysts cyst is formed and then they comes out into the from the host. So, usually they, it, they produce asymptomatic infections that is the infections are not very common. Gastroenteritis with diarrhea can be produced, eosinophilic enteritis can be produced, it can produce myalgia, weakness or mild increase of creatinine kinase only that is not much symptomatology. Lab diagnosis is by free flotation method that is you demonstrate oocysts, sporosis in feces, sarcosis in muscles any of these can be demonstrated or you could use western blot assay, you can also do immunofluorescent assay or you could do ELISA to demonstrate the presence of the antibodies. Now, so wet stain mounts you could deposit, demonstrate these oocysts with sporoblasts you can also see under the UV microscopy or if you do H and E staining from a muscle biopsy if you get you can demonstrate the sarcosis. Treatment and prevention, no effective treatment is known, corticosteroids are the ones which are needed to treat muscular inflammation, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole can you be used to treat these intestinal infections, but basically it is cooking meat well before eating that is you are trying to not ingest the uncooked or the uninfected uh, sarcosis in the uncooked meat which is important. So, that is all I think this would help us to know all the different organisms which are there the intestinal coccidia which are causing infection usually more severe infection in immunocompromised than healthy people. Healthy people usually it might be asymptomatic might go unnoticed, but in, in immunocompromised especially they cause lot of symptomatology very severe symptomatology and can be fatal also because of the dehydration produced due to consequences of the watery diarrhea. Thank you.